Uh, Science Sunday. All right, let's talk about electronics and electricity. This is not particle physics. This is electron flow, electron movement, valence electrons moving in a circuit. What is a circuit? A circuit is an electrical wire. A circuit is a blast of a microwave from a radar set into the air. So this one's a question, a science question for my peers out there listening. We know a photon is created when an electron collapses a shell. It is a release of energy caused by that shell transition. And it's exactly the distance of the shell that sets the frequency of the object ejected. In this case, it is a photon of energy. This happens with every shell transition. So, going back to electrical conductivity, it goes back to high frequency transfer, waveguide theory, how an energy pulse, whether it's electrons or photons, and there is a difference, transmits through a medium. The medium is wire, the medium is air, the medium is water. It depends on the frequency, the energy transmitted, and physics. This is what describes most of these interactions that happen out there. So as I said, specifically a photon is emitted with an electron collapse. If you can measure the frequency, the color, the spectrum emitted by a light source, you can tell what electrons are being excited, what elements inside that are transmitting those are being excited. So you can identify if it's a metal halide lamp, what type of metal is being excited in there. So a photon only exists because an electron moved, but at the moment it's created, at its birth, at its inception, it is exactly what it is until it runs into something else. So if it's the color blue, until it interacts, interferometry with something else, it may change hue or it may disappear. It may be absorbed as energy into something else. That's a photon. An electron, on the other hand, is bound to something. You have to move electrons. This is how radar works. It sends out a huge pulse of electrons. It actually gets the electrons in the atmosphere to move. It's a massive, huge signal that gets irradiate, or radiated from that pulse. These are gigawatts of energy pulses. Gigawatts, that's a lot of watts. Those bastards will jump feet to bite you if you stick a screwdriver into a cabinet. So, all right, that's a simple little difference between a photon and an electron described poorly. But that photon once it's emitted, is its own beast with its own energy and vector. The electron is still an electron, whichever direction it went, right, positive or negative. To measure these things are two totally different instruments. But because we know the correlation, if I see a photon, I know an electron was involved somewhere. Simple two-element talk. My reference are two scientists, uh, Mr. Gerald and Mish, Mr. or a company called Gerald Ash. The two founders of that company came from Europe and invented, created the most, some of the most precise optical instruments the planet has known. From optical gratings and flats to mirrors for telescopes, to optical emission spectrometers that measure parts per million elemental analysis stuff. So there's my references.
you're welcome to go look them up. Their optical emission machines worked off of that physics and that knowledge that that photon is directly, 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 directly related to the electron that generated it. The electron is direct, directly related to the atom it is attached to. So we can tell an electron collapse from a hydrogen atom, from an electron collapse from a oxygen if we burn water in a <laughs> plasma. This is what we do. Science Sunday. You got any problems with the uh, difference between electrons and photons? And the reason for this is it's simple. When you start throwing particle physics in here, you're into a world called uh, impedance instead of resistance. Keep up. We'll get there.